Truly the Lord has borne our infirmities, he has carried our sorrows. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening. This evening, I will not be celebrating the Mass for Monday, the second week of Easter. Instead, tonight I'm going to celebrate the Mass that was uh, specially written uh, by uh, the Vatican just recently, a couple weeks ago. And it's titled, In Time of Pandemic. And uh, the prayers and the readings for this Mass are also appropriate for those of us who are mourning now due to the tragedy that happened over the weekend in Nova Scotia. So brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sin. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask us to bear every virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, who pray for me and for our heart. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to our last amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to healthcare workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love, so that together, we may give glory to your holy name, to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the Book of Lamentations. My soul is deprived of peace, I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, God is my glory, and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gone. My soul continually thinks of it, and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Restore us, O God, let your face shine, that we may be saved. Restore us, O God, let your face shine, that we may be saved. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who are enthroned on the cherub, shine forth. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine, that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors, our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O oh God, let your face shine that we may be saved. Ali. 
who put our trust and our faith in him, we were baptized into his death so that we may rise with him. In our gospel, we hear the story of the disciples of Jesus crossing a lake, a sea. And we're told that the great winds came up, there was a storm, and they became afraid because Jesus was asleep. How often in our own prayers, when we're going through troubles, and perhaps now through this pandemic, through this tragedy, in our neighboring province, have we cried out to God? Are you asleep? Do you not hear our prayers? Do you not care what is happening to your children? But then again, we must go back and reflect on the passion of Christ. He entered into our suffering, even taking on death itself. But death, as I said, couldn't hold him. He's raised from the dead. And that is our hope, especially in this time of despair. Christ has defeated death. Yes, death still occurs in our world, but it has been defeated. Its power is only for that instant. Christ has defeated death, and he has given to us the hope of new life in the resurrection. And so today especially, we should turn to him and turn to that hope, asking him to allow us to feel that peace within our souls, within our hearts, that only he can give. When they woke Jesus up, he turned to the winds, he turned to the sea, and he said, peace. Be still. He was not only speaking to the wind and to the sea, he was also speaking to his disciples and speaking to us, telling us to have peace, to be still, to trust in him, to have faith. The disciples were struck in awe and they said, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Who is this? This is Jesus Christ, the only Son of the living God, the Word made flesh, who dwelt among us, took upon himself our sufferings and even our death, the death brought by sin, so that we can receive new life. The life of the resurrection, the life of God Himself. Each time the Mass is celebrated, remember, and I said oftentimes at Christmas, that as a drop of water is placed into the chalice and mixed with the wine, the priest prays quietly. By the mystery of his water and wine, that we come to share in the divinity of Christ. So we come to share in his divinity, his divine life. Because he humbled himself to share in our humanity. If we have such a God that can do that, then we have a God that will fulfill his promises will fulfill our hopes, will fulfill the promises made to us in our baptism. So today, brothers and sisters, whether we grieve or whether we're frustrated over the episodes of this pandemic and the evil that exists in the world, let us not lose hope 
let us not lose trust and faith in Jesus Christ, the one who walked with us, the one who died for us, the one who offers us his own life and nourishes it with his own body. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with pastoral joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son, may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the good shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. For the world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness which no one can take from them, let us pray to the Lord. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For Harry Berry and Tom Bagley, for whom this Mass is being offered. And for all those who have died due to the pandemic, and especially those who have died due to the tragedy of the shooting. Heidi Stevenson, Jolene Oliver, Aaron Tuck, Emily Tuck. Sean McLeod, Elena Jenkins, Tom Bagley, Lisa McCauley, Heather O'Brien, Kristen B, Greg Blair, Jamie Blair, Lillian Heislock, John Zong, Joanne Elizabeth Thomas Zong, Corey Ellison, Gina Blue, Don Madison, and Frank Madison. For the repose of their souls, the comfort of their families, let us pray to the Lord. And being a people who believe in the mercy of God, let us also pray for Gabriel Gordon, that God may have mercy on him, and also console his family. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, you know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need. Hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe you, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of God. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come and share in the divinity of Christ and all the Son to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual life. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us by your power a source of healing and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all who love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with possible joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all those who hold it to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. We 
Remember, Lord, your servants, especially now those who are suffering due to the pandemic and due to the tragedy of the shooting. Patricia and other family members. But all gathered here in faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, for they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, <clears throat> graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Peel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants, Harry Berry and Tom Baggy, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who know sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we continue to make all these good things of the Lord. We sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <coughs> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Whenever we pray as Jesus taught us, we should always remind ourselves that in that prayer we are asking God to forgive us in as much as we are, for, we are willing to forgive others. And so let us pray together in a spirit of true forgiveness. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait with blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. O God, on our sins and on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, Grant that through this sacrament you may be more in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love through Christ our Lord. We may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, Mass is in. Stay well.